Are you looking to get a funded trading account? I know nowadays there are a lot of options for you. But here at Trader Funding Program, we do things a little bit differently. Plus, we're run by a group of traders that have decades of experience on trading desks and trading floors from around the globe. And we have a simple set of guidelines for you to follow with no hidden rules. And plus, we give you tools to help you become successful, like using Forex analytics, like being in a community of traders where you get to talk to people like me and other Forex analytics analysts all throughout the day. If you take an assessment during the month of July 2024, you're going to get a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, Blake Morrow, president of Forex Analytics. So join us today. I look forward to speaking with you soon. Good morning, traders. Welcome to the Flow Show. And uh, I want to start by saying that uh, you can't say you haven't been warned. We have been banging on for several weeks now that uh, if Japan is going to start intervening again, they might have to change tack uh, because what they did last time wouldn't work this time. And if, as suspected, what's happened this morning, they might have just done that uh, possible intervention again today uh, as you can see from these moves here all the way down from uh, the 158s down to the 156s uh, we we'll have to wait for the accounts again tomorrow no doubt um, but we shall see and it would be a bit of a departure if they have done uh, to what they do previously morning k how are you holding up mate good morning rain good morning everybody um yeah this is uh yeah, I'm, I'm fine, mate. I'm fine. Uh, most of the positions are doing good, and actually better than uh, some uh, some I, I would expect. Um, yeah, I just posted that picture in, the, in our room, and uh, also spoke about it yesterday. They they seem to be going at it completely differently now. It's kind of a guerrilla style intervention, right? So uh, we've had two days of um, lesser amounts than the last interventions, which may have uh, fooled a few people. But uh, I think this is, uh, yeah, completely different style and um, come smaller, but come much more often and scare away the speculators. And that to buy time until the Bank of Japan, I think. And this is exactly what we are seeing right now. Um, and um, yeah, they know the levels, they know the flows, they know where it, it would hurt. So I, I I suspect that this is now the style that they will uh, that they will employ, which is um, better, I think, than the than the one before. But the one before, we also have to put it in context, right? The one before, the dollar was not really giving up the ghost yet. Now the dollar elsewhere is also. Um, a bit offered and um so they have a, perhaps a little bit of an easier uh time to to turn the the tide around but uh, definitely they they are doing it uh, uh differently they, it's and that's what i also said yesterday in the room what would be worse the worst that they could do is just go and sit on the offer because that is not something that is working we i've seen this to the other side when uh when they were like for for two decades trying to buy dollar yen on the, or, or sit on the bits in dollar yen and that didn't work at all. So uh, I think what they are doing now is is pretty cool in uh, yeah. in keeping the speculators on uh, on their toes and and trying to scare them away for the next uh, two or so weeks. Yeah, and it, this is more and more now smelling a bit like twenty twenty two vibes. Um, you know when they were intervening around here and they happened to catch the turn in the data from the, mm. on the, uh, the top of um you know inflation and the like and uh yeah so we could be on for a uh one of these type moves yeah. uh, a big move south but it's going to need a lot of moving parts to uh add to that as well a further softening the u.s data but yeah exactly. we you know we we said even before the the bank of japan ended uh NERP and uh you know uh, all their their bond buying and uh, ETF buying and everything like that. Um, that you know, if if the end didn't respond to that, they were going to have a big uphill battle to fight. Uh, because if you if your central bank can't turn around the fortunes, if the economy can't try to turn around the fortunes of the yen, um, you're going to have a big bum fight. And this is where we're at at the moment. I think they have got a big fight on their hands. But 
they are pushing a bit on an open door, as we said, mm. with uh, the softening US side of things. But uh, yeah, you're right, you right? Say, real warfare. Yeah, and and you're uh, absolutely right that the fight is is still on. Now. We imagine Bank of Japan underwhelms uh, at the end of the month that they that they don't um, got really the JGB buying by a fair chunk, um, even if they would raise the 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 rates by let's say fifteen pps. They could come with a shocker and do 25, but uh, that remains to be seen. But uh, as you say, if if they are underwhelming at the end of the month, then the fight is not over. Far from yeah. over, by the way. Uh, yeah. I, th I, think, I think a 25 BP is, is too expensive for them. Um, just to go, that would be quite a shock move and, you know, yeah. given how much oh, of the well, bond market they own. And, uh, especially, be... yeah, especially that the government is, 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 is only thinking about... Uh, uh, putting those uh, variable bonds in place uh, in 2026. I mean, it's so, so too late. And uh, they, they should really do it right now, inflation in bonds. And, but uh, they, are, they are not yet doing it. So it's it's still over to whatever the uh, the MOF can come up with and then the Bank of Japan at the end of the month. And uh, yeah, that still remains to be seen. Um, in the meantime, the way they do it, they can easily put it um, down below somewhere, perhaps 155, even even below, because they've got help from the the other dollars, uh, and that's um, that would already be something. And then uh, we will see at the end of the month. Yeah. And the as you say, that the U.S. data, they really need the U.S. data now to to start uh, looking like other data, like the eurozone, <laughs> also to uh, to curb the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. So, depending on where the yen's sitting into the BOJ, we can probably expect a few uh, a few uh, snipers in the bushes around that meeting. Most definitely, that'll be a big intervention risk meeting that one. But uh, anyway, let's move on. We'll look at uh, the prices in more detail shortly. Um, over in New Zealand, uh, we've had this uh, much-awaited uh, Kiwi inflation data, um, and it has. Uh, gone the way of the RBNZ uh, in terms of moving towards cuts. Um, so the quarter and quarter inflation coming in at 0.4%, uh, lower than expected year on year, coming in at 3.3%, lower than expected. Um, they've also got another funky measure that they use. Uh, it's called the, the sectoral factor model or some bollocks that they like to dream up these central banks uh, that came in at 3.6 percent versus 4.2 percent so another uh, lower mark there so everyone's jumping all over rate cut uh, expectations for the rbnz and uh, <clears throat> anz have done a bit of an hsbc um, so pretty much earlier this year february march time they were predicting that the rbnz would cut in q4 penciling november um, when their research team came out with that, their actual CEO actually said that uh, he sees it more as into 2025. So the research team last month decided they're going to follow their CEO and they moved their forecast last month, uh, not not uh, 20 days ago. They moved their forecast for a rate cut in November to February 2025. And three guesses which way they've gone this morning after this data. You guessed it, all the way back to November. Um, so another bank uh, whistling in the wind there. But anyway, that's increased uh, the chances of an RBNZ rate cut. Uh, still far out, no, <clears throat> excuse me, still far out, though, in uh, November. Okay, is there any room for that to uh, come whittling back a bit uh, sooner? Okay, knowing or everything is possible <laughs> he can cut uh what is, what is the next meeting uh pop 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 uh kiwi kiwi 14th of july whoops 14th august yeah what was that did my microphone just uh do something funny um no uh, well I, I don't think that that's on the cards but um people are also hiding behind that non-tradable CPI thing, which is still stuck at uh, above 5%, 5.4. Um, so there's, there's a lot of eyes on that, which seems to hold people back from expecting too much, and which also saw um, what was the main reason for the, for the Aussie not to, uh, for the Kiwi, sorry, not to dump any further on the headline CPI. 
Um, yeah, what do I make of it? I, you know what? Nobody wants to hike anymore. We've been saying it uh, so often, and uh, we're looking at cuts. I, I think November is is just a plausible one. Um, even if that non-tradable goes down much lower, that that could get actually a knock on the head any time. Uh, because don't forget that the the antipodians that's why they're called this way are going more into winter time and um yeah it, it, it could just be that uh, we get a bit of an acceleration lower uh, in between now and and august september and uh, i i wouldn't i wouldn't completely be against it or rule it out you know that we have november but it, it's november as you say i mean it's not happening tomorrow right yeah, exactly. So a lot, lot of water to go under the bridge, uh, even though we don't get inflation until quarterly. So it's going to be uh, September before we get the next uh, uh, inflation data from those lot. But uh, yeah, we shall see. We shall see. Um, no one knows when they're going to cut, uh, least of all the banks. Uh, it's just pointed out. Uh, excuse me. I've got a little bit of a tickle. Um, right. More inflation data, uh, a whole stack of it there from the UK. And what does it mean for the Bank of England? So just to go through the numbers. First, headline CPI stayed unchanged at 2%. That's bang on the BRE's target for the second month running. Uh, core inflation was expected to come down a pip. It stayed unchanged as well. So purely on that basis, um, there's been no change in inflation since the uh, June BOE meeting, which one could say possibly shows that uh, they don't need to uh, change rates um, if nothing's changed. Um, now looking at some of the other details. So services, there's a, a metric services number in there that was unchanged as well at 5.7%. That's one of the figures that the bank are looking at. So that still remains sticky. Again, reduces the chance of a rate cut in August. Um, CPI H, which is on there, also staying sticky, 2.8%. <clears throat> so again, these numbers, sticky, sticky, sticky. RPI, 2.9%, did come down, uh, but only a pip, still a hefty number there. Um, PPI as well. Now, a couple of things. We've seen negative year-on-year -year numbers on input prices uh, for quite some time now. Um, pretty much uh, going back into last year as well. Um, but if you take it from the beginning of the year, we've steadily seen these negative numbers lessening. Um, so turning towards the positive, you can see by the chart there, we had a big reaction up, had a little bit under, but now we're just creeping up again. So potential for some PPI pressure to come in over the months ahead. The Bank of England do expect to see uh, inflation being a bit bumpy. Um, also, on the output prices, still positive on the year, though, and negative on the month. So these is uh, producers, what they're charging after they produced. Um, so, again, there's still a bit of stickiness there, um, even with that uh, falling month on month. So overall, there's enough here to say that the BOE will stay on hold. Um, there's still plenty of data to go under the bridge. We've got the jobs data tomorrow. Um, so there's two there's two things at play here. Yes, inflation hasn't changed, but inflation is at target. <clears throat> Do the Bank of England risk seeing inflation falling below target before they move on rates? Bailey's previously said that uh, they don't need to wait for inflation to get to target before cutting rates. Well, here we are. He's also said that uh, one rate cut, one small rate cut, won't effectively change the restrictiveness. Is there enough here to get some of those fence sitters jumping into uh, cuts? As I say, I think the wages data and the jobs data tomorrow might might be enough to swing some of them. I think at the very least on the, all this data and uh, without knowing what tomorrow is going to happen, at most or at least we get in August is an indication that September's on the cards. Maybe one or two of these fence sitters move into uh, the cut side of things, keeping it unchanged, but indicating we're creeping closer. Um, but August, I think it's still in the frame. Markets reduced expectations to 25% chance of a rate cut at the August meeting. <clears throat> 
I think it might be a little bit higher than that, personally. Um, we know they're desperate to cut. Uh, will they is the question. Kay, what are your thoughts on uh, all that UK data? Yeah, um, that's um, a very nice sum up of, uh, of, of what uh, what's going on and uh, and what the the ideas may be of those who were just uh, on the limit border of uh, of going into cut. Um, perhaps not enough to to go for the cut, but uh, not well sticky. Yes, but not high enough to to to. To keep them on 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 the other side, I think so. It, it's going to be a close call, uh, August. That, that's what I think. In the meantime, um, we've seen overall that the sterling is still doing all right. Um, bit of stability in the uh, in in the UK system. Um, data not too bad. So if you if you would actually take away the um, the stickiness also of the of the inflation, uh, it, it's still doing all right. So uh, I I I don't know, but the um, I'm 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 long sterling and I and I like it. So uh, will 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 the increased probability of a cut weigh heavily in the sterling? That 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 is the question because yeah. if. Uh, yeah. Let's say August they don't cut, and then uh, they they will likely, very likely, cut uh, the meeting afterwards. Is it going to change much? That that is, I think, the question that we have to um, ask ourselves now. And um, unless they 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 really hint at something, I don't know if we get any more speakers out uh, soon. But uh, I I would say it's not going to change the needle a bit. But I but I agree with you that the, the probability now priced in is it seems a bit low for me too. But is it going above 50? I don't think so. Yeah, no, I, I don't think so either. Um, yeah, is it, as always, we're not trading if we're trading when, as far as rate cuts are concerned. Um, so yeah, that no one should be expecting if if the if the Bank of England cut rates in August, no one should be expecting the pound to collapse. Um, yeah, there'll be a bit of a shock if the market's underpricing it. Um, but after that, yeah, so what? They've done it. We knew it was coming. Move on to other things. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're still in that situation with a lot of currencies. You know, there's no real moves on rate expectations uh, at the moment. Um, a bit waffling around the calendar, and that's, that's about it. Um, right, moving on. Um, Back to the US and uh, that data yesterday, and once again, confounding expectations that uh, the US is about to de descend into a fiery abyss with the data. Um, pretty strong retail sales. They came in flat in the headline number, uh, were expected to fall. Um, take out some of the, uh, you know, the other measures, take out gas, take out autos, that sort of thing. It rose 0.8. This number here, the control group, which is like core, core sales, uh, pretty healthy looking 0.9% compared to expectations. So yes, people will jump all over. It's not inflation adjusted and real sales adjusted mean that no one's bought anything since 1962 or whatever. Numbers are the numbers. They're not negative numbers. They're pretty positive numbers. Um, so as Blake said yesterday, you do well not to bet against the US consumer. Um, we also got some import and export price data, which was a little bit all over the place. Uh, export prices down, but import prices up. There was some skews in there from gasoline and fuels and oils and other things in there. Um, so a bit of a messy picture from that. Um, <clears throat> but overall, US data, particularly retail sales, looking okay-ish. Um, we also got uh, the NHAB housing market index a little later. This one had been looking soft, and it went soft again by a point. Um, so, again, further yellow flags being waved in the housing market. We get some further housing data. I think today we get starts and permits. Let's have a quick butchers. Uh, yeah, starts and permits today. So we'll get another look to see how that's doing there. Um, other data we had was... <clears throat> Um, Canada CPI, which all came down-ish, depending on which one you want to look at. Uh, there are 30 different measures. Common, 2.3 versus 2.4. Headline, 2.7, as expected, but confirmed the drop from 2.9. This one down, that one up or 
unchanged up over expectations. Um, not really moving. Well, it has moved the needle a little bit. We're now pricing 90% chance of a cut next week versus 80% previously. Um, <clears throat> I think that's more the case that uh, nothing went up. Uh, so it looks like we're nailed on for a, a cut from the BOC next week. Um, that obviously means the bigger price risk is if they don't. Um, but uh, for the loony, that's uh, where we're sitting with that amid what's going on elsewhere in the dollar. Um, I've had uh, one Fed head out. Uh, Fed's Kugler says it will be appropriate to begin easing monetary policy later this year if economic conditions continue to evolve favourably. If the market cools too much, it will be appropriate to cut rates sooner rather than later. The employment mandate has become much more relevant. Uh, if incoming data doesn't provide confidence that inflation is moving towards a 2% target, it may be appropriate to hold rates steady a little longer. Um, on the rate expectation front, um, the market is, or one aspect of the market, is now pricing a September cut at 100%. So that's where the target is. The bullseye is on September for that. Uh, and as mentioned, the BOC now 90% for next week. Um, Europe, we know that uh, they want to slam tariffs on Chinese EVs. Well, there was... Uh, a vote, 12 members backed those tariffs, four voted against it, 11 of them abstained. Uh, this was a non-binding vote, so just the way politics works in the EU, EU Parliament. Um, they get a consensus opinion, if you like, uh, but only 12 members backed that um, four, well, sorry, 15 either voted against or abstained. Um, Donald Trump has been out and about in the presses, um, throwing out some comments hither and thither. <clears throat> um, he's warned Powell not to cut rates before the election. Um, he also said that Taiwan would need to pay for any help uh, in its defence against China. And these comments have caused a bit of a uh, wobble in some sectors, particularly uh, chip stocks. Um, the market has drew a bit of a conclusion uh, when these headlines first dropped that he was saying that the, the US aren't going to back Taiwan um, if something kicks off with China. Um, but that's not what he said. He's talking about uh, they'll need to pay for any such defence, which, again, one could draw the conclusion if they don't pay, they won't get the US help. Um, although the US does have uh, some, some laws in place, I think, where they've got to step in and help Taiwan on a military basis. Um, I don't know the ins and outs of that, but his comments uh, are hitting uh, tech stocks, hitting chip stocks this morning, which is causing a bit of a uh, fallout in the, the NASDAQ particularly. Again, that might be a bit led into what's going on in the dollar um, and in, uh, what was going on in uh, dollar-yen, because uh, as Kay mentioned, we're seeing the dollar uh, weakening across the board as well. Um, but Trump also had some comments on the currency, and I'll read you the exact quote. He says, so we have a big currency problem because of the depth of the currency now in terms of strong dollar and weak yen and weak yuan uh, is massive. He said, I used to fight them. Um, they wanted it all. They wanted it weak all the time. They would fight it. And I said, if you weaken it anymore, I'm going to have to put tariffs on you. Um, so those comments on the currencies themselves, again, has the market thinking that if he gets into power, um, he's going to be running along those lines again, that uh, if currencies weaken too much, he's going to hit them with tariffs. Once again, it might be a reason why we're seeing those particular currencies uh, strengthening because uh, dollar China <clears throat> is also dipping alongside that. So, OK, it's, that this, this might be one reason why <clears throat> it, this, is, this isn't intervention because we're seeing other pairs move in uh, line with these comments. No, this isn't intervention uh, in in the dollar yuan. This is. Uh, no, no, I meant yeah. I meant in the yen. Just you know, it might not be intervention in the yen because of these comments is affecting more than just the yen. Yeah, it may it, it may too. We will see on uh, on to, in tomorrow's data. Um, yeah, those warnings and uh, we have seen the market trade them. Eh? Those trade those, those warnings and also we know that. Um, um the trump and the well the potential trump administration um is looking to towards a weaker dollar as well so it goes well in 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 that whole framework um 
yeah, we need to be uh, need to be a bit careful with all with all the dollars, especially when it comes in, and that goes against where what people were saying, like, yeah, well, the dollar should rise when he when he gets elected. I don't think I think it's the wrong reaction to have. Um, could have a bit of a knee jerk reaction, but then I think uh, we we take the other way around. Yeah, it's 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 back, uh, and and also his um, his running mate that he chose. Um, JD Vance. I find it easier to say DJ, uh, DJ Vance. Um, he's uh, he's a geopolitical hawk as well, so he's not going to um, put anything in 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 the way of uh, or, or against all of this. So um, yeah, we may be in for a bit of a, a of a reaction as well. And and yeah, they, they are they are going to pick up the tariffs again. The uh, fight against uh, uh, here and there. Uh, probably have uh, have them tax uh, Scott Swiss, uh, Scottish whiskey again, and uh, what else? Not uh, lukewarm uh, English beer. Uh, so yeah, we, we're we're back on the train. It, it, it's actually very predictable, right? When uh, when when you hear him talk, he's just talking like he was in sixteen seventeen. <clears throat> yeah, very much so. And I think I think you're right. What you said um, yesterday, you know, regards to the dollar, you know, and, and we've said it all before. Not not all dollars are the same. Um, yeah, yeah. I think we because of the shooting incident and the market thinking that Trump's uh, <clears throat> going to be a surefire uh, winner. It's it's more trading his headlines now than than it was two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever. And and you're right. You know if. If you look at the dollar, yeah, it might strengthen against the euro on the on a Trump win because he'll be going for pro growth and everything, but it might weaken against the yuan and, and yen because he wants to hit those currencies if they're weakening uh, again. So it's I don't think it's all one dollar trade for for Trump, no. um, and you know, same with dollar mex. <clears throat> you know, there's, there's all moving yeah. parts of this. Yeah, absolutely, and and also don't forget that. Uh, uh, let, let's not forget that that China is is on the other side of that trade, relatively speaking, right? Because they feel some heat with those tariffs, so I don't think that they will let actually dollar China go down too much right now. And um, I I don't know, but I would really not be surprised that despite the dollar being lower elsewhere, that um, China comes in and keeps those fixings now. Uh, a, a bit on the on the higher side, so um, yeah. I wouldn't even be surprised if they move into the seven fourteens, even with the rest of the dollars uh, coming down. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we even had our our favourite propeller head, uh, Brad uh, Setzer, saying that uh, that's one thing China could do if they get hit by tariffs. Fine, just weaken the currency and yeah. uh, and reduce the the act from them. So yeah. yeah. Uh, I, exactly I think we'll know more about uh, about uh, China once they come out of the plenum. Perhaps we 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 will have some kind of direction uh, guidelines and things. Um, so uh, I I think tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, could be an interesting one for uh, all things uh, Chinese. I'm I'm going to keep a particular interest in what they may say coming out of those. Uh, coming out of those uh, uh, meetings, right? Um, I, I just, Ali, on, on those tariffs, we, we, we have just been talking about it. It's not a clear-cut thing. I mean, how tariffs impact the currency, um, if, if the, it, it can have a dual effect. If, if, a, if a country cannot export as much as they uh, uh, would do in normal times because they got tariffs uh, uh, stuck on them. It is bad for the economy, so that so the the the, the currency should weaken. Okay, um, but if but it's not necessarily uh, the case because it it you won't know if if tariffs will work or not. Slam a ten percent tariff on something, it may not make uh, make too much of a difference. But in in this case, he's fighting on on two. On two fronts, he 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 slaps tariffs, let's say for instance on China, but at the same time he tells them not to weaken the currency, or and and I mean they can instruct uh, I don't know who to to even start selling dollar China in a, in a way to to massage it lower, but um, usually tariffs and and a weaker economy points at a at a bit of a weaker currency if you want. Um, it, it's never a good thing economically when you get. 
tariffs uh, slammed on your uh, upon your product uh, exports, right? Um, and now talking about it, it could actually have a double whammy on uh, on the Chinese yuan, yuan and, and going even weaker if they want to uh, spur their exports uh, through the currency. But um, let's see, because it's not only not only that going on, there's a lot of geopolitics as well as play. So it's it's not as clear cut, but uh, in a simple in simple terms, that that could be the uh, the effect of uh, tariffs on a, on a currency. Yeah. Yeah, in, in in very simple terms, just in case anyone doesn't understand it, and it's not linear, so it's not you know one number equals another. If Trump puts up puts ten percent tariffs on the goods, it makes it ten percent effectively makes it ten percent more expensive to buy those goods. If China's not going to sell that because they're too more expensive, they weaken their currency and make it ten percent cheaper. So they, it's it's an offsetting factor um, uh, weakening your currency against things like tariffs. Um, so one side goes up 10%, the com- they make the currency go down 10%, and net-net, it's zero. So that's why tariffs can have no effect um, if players want to mess around with their uh, currency to combat it. Um, but as we said, we shall see. I'm getting a bit... Um, I might have a little tap down here in uh, Dollar China. We seem to be holding this uh, low at the moment. I was... Uh, I'm thankful now. I started doing a bit of slicing and dicing up above uh, 728 yesterday yeah. um, on my longs. I'm a bit in the middle here, 727, 27 and a half. Um, but as I've cut a bit up there, I might add a bit down here just to improve the average a bit and uh, play it against this uh, big zone that we've got down. 725s going to be, or 724 and a half is going to be a big old level um, down here. You you add in uh, or looking to add right now? Are you waiting to see what these, uh, what these headlines draw? I... Well, this morning, um, people know in the trades room, um, this morning I reduced my, my dollar China to the strict minimum. I, I also sold yesterday around 728.90 and uh, very happy about that. Um, this is where I bought it really, seven, what was it? No, 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 I, I, I bought it. At, yeah, I bought it in 727.60 and I sold it around 728.90. Then this morning I sold more around 727.80 and I'm, I'm actually right down to a very small one but i'm i'm actually thinking of buying some back we we are on uh, on support okay just 726 72590 but um since i don't have much of it left at all i'm i'm actually thinking that the reaction the market reaction is also a lot has to do with the dollar yen being lower as well and uh, and dollar china following suit right um, and uh, but uh, but I'm not sure that dollar China has much deeper to go unless the dollar crashes away. But is it really going to from here? I'm 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 not so sure. So yeah, I'm thinking about reloading actually a few. Uh, well, right as we speak, why not? No, go on in. You, you've talked me into it. I might as well uh, take a little bit as well. Let me see. You probably get a better feel than I will. Seven twenty-five and a half. I got. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> 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 you bloody vulture what am i getting oh, oh look 726 and a half on the nose there we go yeah 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 it's about around there mate. yeah so there you go bit of live trading for you um uh Dureish, uh yeah i just mentioned earlier about trump uh telling the fed not to cut rates do they listen to him probably not uh i don't know how many people listen to him uh particularly when he when he was president let alone when he's not president um, no, the Fed will do what the Fed will do. Um, more as a question of what will happen with Powell, um, whether he stays on after 2026. Powell has also said that he wouldn't look to replace Powell <clears throat> before his term ends. So uh, it looks like, yeah, we're, we're stuck with Powell for another 18 months or so. And uh, we'll see where he puts it next. Well, that, that'll be fun if he gets he wants to put in a new uh, central banker. I wonder who mm. he'll pick. Have you seen an article in the Nikkei? I mean, he's thinking about <laughs> Jimmy Diamond to uh, Jamie Diamond to come uh, to become a US uh, to become the treasurer in, in in replacement of Yellen. Because I mean, if he if he wants to keep power in, I think Yellen <laughs> Yellen will be a different case. Uh, he, I don't think he wants to keep her. Um, so yeah, that would be a fun uh, thing. Jamie Diamond as a, as treasurer and. Um, Big, big move away from Goldman Sachs uh, by doing so, right? Usually, it's yeah. always a Goldman Sachs guy uh, 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 that that 
gets the treasurer a job or an ex Goldman Sachs guy, so uh, or or lady. Now uh, that's uh, that's going to be uh, funny, if it's Jamie Dimon. I wonder, I wonder if he's going to get the old uh, plunge protection band back together, old Munchkin back in, and uh, all the old crew. I don't know. Has, has, has Biden got a plunge protection team? I don't know if he's got to. Uh, uh, it always used to be fun when stocks dipped. Call up the uh, PPT. Well, I so far we didn't need one, right? Yeah, that's true. That's so true. So far we didn't true. need one, and I'm, I'm not sure he. Uh... He's he more or, or even his crew care too much about the Nasdaq. Um, they they would rather probably care about something like the Dow or the Dow or so being being more being more of the traditional crew, shall I say, yeah, right. not to call them uh, OAP. <laughs> yeah, you did that right. Anyway, um, let's crack on with some price. And this is other any points of uh, order you've got, Kay? Um, one. Uh, Ryan, one, 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 and um, it, it's not something that is that is really um, right now uh, uh, present now. But um, we've got uh, we've got Star Wars King speech in uh, in the UK, and I'm not really I'm not going to say I'm not interested in it. Of course, we we always listen to stuff in, in case it makes the market moves. But where I'm more interested in 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 what he's been saying, and now. It does look like um, the EU and the UK um, seem to be planning a um, a meeting to improve their their post Brexit relationship, and I'm kind of wondering, and I, and I've been thinking about that for for a while, if that is not part of the reason why also the market is looking at the sterling relatively positively right now, because. If you talk about improved relationships, and we are not going to go, um, not, not even thinking about going back to a pre-Brexit situation, not at all. I'm, I'm not saying that, although Starmer would love it, I, I guess. Um, but if they could come to an arrangement to to like alleviate or lighten up all those, all that enormous paperwork and, and checks and stuff, because the checks, if I'm correct, have been delayed, uh, border checks. Because I'm actually going to Brussels next month, and I think they have uh, they have uh, um, stopped that uh, that um, scanning thing uh, as well at the border. So I'm wondering if that is not part of why Sterling is doing relatively okay. Just a number of percentage points in in the fact that it is doing all right. Yeah, quite possibly. Um, there will be well. Starmer said he's not going to uh, reverse the result or offer a, uh, another vote, so he's he's ruled that out. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It'll become a big political thing, uh, I think. And uh, if if the EU gives concessions to uh, the Labour Party where they didn't with uh, the Conservative parties, it's all going to kick off politically. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> there's there, as you said, there's lots of factors at the moment pointing uh, towards the pound doing well or holding up rather than uh, falling out of bed. And uh, they all led up. They all led up. Right, let's uh, crack on. I'm going to start with cable. I've, I've, I've blown a bit of a trade in this one. I, I, when we were coming up just below 1.30, uh, just as we were seeing uh, dollar yen weakening, I thought, well, oh, this might be going. I did have a buy stop at 1.30.15. We broke it, got to 13, I think it was, and then faffed around and I, I pulled it. I should have left it, but I pulled it. Um, and this one's uh, made the break at 1.30, knocked out the barrier, uh, and it looks like it's uh, going to crack on. So we're probably looking at uh, up towards uh, these highs now, up in the 131s. Um, that's going to be the next big area up there. Got another level, 131.70s. Um, see where far back that goes to. So that goes all the way back to this area here. Um, again, one of those long-term multi-year levels where we've had a bit of action up around their high 131s. So that's going to be the next big level to look at. Um, if we get there pretty quickly, that might be a, a move too far, one would say. Um, but if it's coming on the back of the dollar moving, and uh, you can gauge that as always by what's happening in euro sterling. So as we know, if the dollar wants to move, it'll move. And uh, that's the reason why we're seeing uh, these moves in cable and euro dollar. Uh, it's not because their economies are going gangbusters. Um, so as always, you can measure what's going on in cable 
um, as to whether it's a pound move more than just a dollar move. And uh, right now it's looking a bit more on the pound side, not hugely. We're back under 84. We held this low to the pip this morning. Um, so that's your marker. Uh, and I did mention in the chat room this morning, if this is going to head down, it needs to probably take out 80. If it takes out 80, then we're probably off on running. Um, again, I was tempted to add, I've just got no conviction right now. I'm already, I'm still short this, so I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, but I did think about adding into 84s. I didn't bother. Um, and now we're back down at 90s. So a bit in the balance here, I think, at the moment. Um, 84s, 83, 85. Um, you're still holding in this one as well, aren't you, Kay? Yeah, and I had it again this morning. Um, why? Well, but as usual, I'm I'm slicey and dicey. I already bought some back, but um, I, I reduced my starting positions before those CPI uh, inflation data because you never know, right? Um, but I I went back into cable, went back uh, added again to to existing era sterling shorts. I I I just still like the 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 sterling, and then and I still like it much better than the euro as well. So um, it all still makes quite. I think now uh, there's something about the dollar and um, so my position in euro sterling is slightly bigger than, than cable because I've been reducing the cable a little bit on this on this run up as well I do think we can see 131 we never know we may be at the at the start of a, of a huge dollar decline but but we never know right and the data are not of the sort of saying like the dollar is going to fall out of bed either. So I'm 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 always a little more cautious with uh, with the dollar trade. Um, I think 131 is possible, but that may be as far as this move or this leg of the move uh, can run. And I'm and I'm actually looking a little bit at at, at other stuff as well. You know, um, like. Yes, the Kiwi is back higher, and and the Aussie is, is also has also found support, but they are lagging just that tiny bit. Um, also, looking at uh, at uh, what's happening in, in dollar and dollar mix, dollar Canada, uh, they they are, they have different uh, sensitivities, but um, I'm, uh, I'm 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 still a bit cautious to go like all gangbusters. I was pretty short dollars at 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 one stage. But then you always have to keep reasonable. So um, I really think if we see 131, I'm going to take the rest off and uh, and and watch it for a little bit uh, because we could have a little bit of a, a, an overshoot and then uh, and then coming back. Same is starting to feel. Um, st same one is starting to feel on gold as well, and it's still extremely big. And we are through 24 and a half. Um, but it. <laughs> The, the momentum buyers are, are very much in charge right now. But then when I look at US yields, for instance, um, they don't support much further to go. Although there is other stuff, as I've been explaining in, at, at, at work in gold, I think work, gold is really um, the, 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 the basket or, and that, that, that uh, comprises everything that that you don't want to have in 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 other stuff right now in the market, and uh, whether it be expectations of lower yields, geopolitics, um, yeah, even the gold the gold miners are are flying, um, and it, it's also an anti uh, anti lower yields and uh, and and all those kind of things going on. I, it's really the 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 basket where everything that uh, that is going wrong elsewhere is is now concentrated, but we have done the move from twenty threes uh, up to nearly twenty five now. It, it it also may start to um, start to be enough for this round anyway. That, that that's how I look at things. I have um I have targets up around twenty five, and um, I've. Reduced it a little bit again this morning. Got about a quarter left, and if I see 25, 25 and a half somewhere on a on an overshoot, I'll I'll be more than happy to to take the profits and uh, and reassess. So th this is this is where I am at uh, at right now. You know. Yeah, the, the gold might. It, it's looking like it might be back on the uh, the buying the stocking up trade um, that we saw all through you know this period when we saw this big rally. 
it's got yeah, it's, it's just awesome. got that feel to it. You know, and you mentioned the, the buying in Asia um, yep. you know, every, every night. It's just got that feel to it again. That, yeah, that, uh, hmm. This is more than just, uh, you know, inflation trades or yield trades. That, Absolutely. Uh, the buyers are back in again. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's what I've been saying as well. I'm I'm very closely monitoring whatever Eurasia is doing on gold, and they they during the night, even though we came we came we came in uh, well away from the highs, but overnight they have been buying again, and that's what I was saying too. It it's probably the, one of the reasons is 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 that the market or the, at least the Asian market knows that PBOC is is likely on a path of. A uh, small week you one somewhere that it that would like to be. So what what do the Asian accounts do? They you 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 go into something where you don't want to have you one, and then if they are if the dollar is not doing uh, doing great, they 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 run into gold. We have seen that uh, already many 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 times, and uh, and it's not only China. You you can look at the other Asian central banks or even the the Asian investors. Um, they are doing the same. Right? Yeah, and some of those Africans as well, they're getting on the act, yeah. uh, as we heard. Though uh, <laughs> I don't think they've got the pockets to uh, do anything meaningful in this, but uh, it all adds up. Uh, do you want to take it for a couple? Um, yes, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Um, quick look at uh, what happened in the Kiwi uh, over those uh, CPI data, because it, uh, it was indeed a very interesting move. We had... Uh, Lower CPI headlines, and where did it run into? Straight into the into the uh, trend line support, and bounced. Okay, so um, and, and as I was saying, this is probably due to that uh, non-tradable CPI, which is still sticky. Market overpricing some stuff already going into the um, the CPI data on a, on a much lower um, or. Uh, um, Kiwi and and we bounced straight off the uh, straight off the trend line. I I don't have anything in the Kiwi right now because I'm I'm not sure if it's the 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 right one to have. But at, at least um, for those who picked it up, uh, it's a it's a nice uh, trade and we are um, we are bouncing off it. So this is a, a very decent level to hold. And um, I see Angela mentioning the Euro crosses and the Euro Aussie as well. Look at where Euro Kiwi went up to, right up to that trend line as well, and 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 up to the sixty one point eight around uh, one eighty and a half, uh, one eighty sixty. Okay, and now we are already uh, reversing from it uh, pretty uh, heavily, and I think that also is something that uh, we have to bear in mind when when trading Euro is that some of those Euro pairs are not as bit as they may seem, some of them at least. Eurozy as well. I, I thought we would uh, we could reach this this one sixty two and a half, but we uh, we are uh, we really fell short of it uh, right now. Although we are not miles away, I, I still think this could uh, potentially go up there. But if you look at the the, the broader market, um, of course this is this is higher. But uh, I. Still Still, would think that if we get to certain levels, it, we, it may just lose steam and uh, and start to get uh, get back down. Um, this is uh, yeah one that I keep an eye on uh, if it comes up to one sixty two and a half, just to see the reaction up there, see what the uh, see what the euro is uh, is doing up there. Um, can we show the euro dollar? It's it's grinding, it's grinding. Yeah, people are uh, say one ten, but uh, already there's this this triangle trend line coming in around one hundred nine seventy seventy five. Then you got a bit of an extension here around uh, one hundred nine eighty five. So watch the seventy five eighty five. I'd say for a startup, if that would go, then then there's probably more um, stop losses also to be triggered, and um, and we could go for a run, but. Not sure how far the euro can uh, can really go, and I promised yesterday to have a look at dollar rand. Um, the rand, and I was scratching my head a little bit yesterday why why dollar rand came came down relatively fast here. Um, I'm, I've got smalls, um, but we are still very well in that triangle, and and not only the triangle, but but we are keeping uh, above this this prior low here, so. Um, for those playing this triangle, which I am trying to do, um, 
1786 is really where it has to hold um if if we would uh, get below this uh, this triangle um try out with some stops but it's already holding 18 right now i didn't get the net uh, that i had in overnight so I, I i pulled it um i i still think we are in here yesterday i think the the, the reason why dollar rent went lower first of all we had a bit of a lower dollar but also gold was ripping higher and we can't forget that south africa is still a gold producer so i think that some one and all had a bit to do uh, with each other uh, but now that it's it's calming down somewhere we see dollar rent starting to move higher again so uh, i think it's still uh, valid this uh, this triangle and and perhaps draw a bit of a line around here perhaps at some stage back to 1870s 1880 perhaps that is that is still very possible for me i'm still not a rent bull um and yesterday finally i gave this one a try I was hesitant when we traded around. This is Euro Noki, uh, and 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 again, if we, I'm seeing triangles everywhere these days. Um, we went slightly above, and on the way back down, I, I decided to give it a little try here, see if this uh, this can hold. We have a double level here: eleven eighty one, eleven eighty three, um, seventy eight point six of this uh, move lower. So that's going to be a very, very low risk trade now because I've already uh, taken smalls back this morning around 74 and a half. So uh, very, very low risk trade. See if, uh, see if this can hold. Um, also, if you look at, uh, at Scandies being some kind of accelerated euros, stocky even more than, than Noki, but uh, they, they can be. Um, that may be not not too bad of a of a trade. Um, perhaps dollar noki would be better, but I chose to do euro noki because I'm still not a huge fan of the of the euro. And with that, Ryan, back over to you, Will. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, Ali, you've asked that question about reversing trades. Um, just looking at the clock, we are running uh, quite long, so remind me tomorrow if uh, if I forget, and uh, we'll have a chat about it. Uh, tomorrow uh for now we'll call it a day thank you very much Kay. thank you very much everybody um for coming as always to the flow show trade well trade safely and uh we'll see you all tomorrow have a good one hey traders this is blake morrow with forex analytics thanks for stopping by our youtube channel don't forget to like these videos share them and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free thanks for stopping by i'll see you in the next video Thank <laughs> you.